Now these days, new cars can be absolutely loaded with tech, and if you know me, I absolutely love my tech on my cars. But they're all starting to come with this rather annoying feature. And if you don't know what it is, it's, um, it's this thing over here. Now I've contemplated making a video on this particular feature and kind of topic which uh, has been kind of lingering around at the back of my mind for a little while. And basically if you don't know what it is, it's a thing called a speed warning or a speed alert or the official name is like an intelligent speed assistant. In theory, the way it's meant to work is basically notify you if you're speeding or going faster than you should be. Which sounds good, but I'll explain why in a minute how it's a little bit flawed and doesn't always work to the best of its ability or kind of what it says. So I'll explain that in a minute. But most importantly as well, I'll also explain how you can turn it off for your own car. So whether you own a Mercedes, a BMW, a Volkswagen, a Tesla, a Mini, a BYD, I'll explain how you can turn it off for your own car. But first, what is it and how does it work? In essence, a speed limiter or speed warning sounds really good. In fact, back in 2019, when it was first announced, I was all for it. However, as I review a fair few car manufacturers on my YouTube channel, I've noticed that, uh, well, they're all virtually the same and sometimes they get it wrong. So I'm just gonna explain why it's here in the first place. Over the last 50 years, there have been a handful of moments that have made driving much, much safer for us all. From seatbelts to controlled crash test standards to driving assistance tech that can bring you to a halt, stop you veering out of a lane, monitor your blind spots, keep the car at a steady pace on the motorway and even tell you when you're tired. They can do it all. So with all of this, the European Union agreed in 2019 to work on the next thing which can make driving safer for everyone. Enter a thing called ISA. As of July the 7th, 2024, all new cars sold in the UK must be equipped with an intelligent speed assist system, ISA for short. This innovative system uses GPS and road sign recognition to ensure vehicles adhere to speed limits, significantly enhancing road safety. Although part of EU law, this new regulation applies to the UK and impacts all new vehicles sold after the state, including cars and vans. Now, I have mixed feelings on this because some of the time it works and then some of the time it doesn't. And I'm not calling out any car manufacturer in particular here. Every car manufacturer that I reviewed, I do get some of these comments in the comment section talking about this speed warning thing. So they are all the same. And the reason for it is kind of how it works. So basically, as you drive around, the car, depending on the equipment, will do one of two things. The first thing is that it's constantly scanning for a speed sign, you know, the ones that are actually out on the um, on the sides of the road. So I'm in a built up area at the moment, so this is, you know, 30 miles an hour. But in a minute, we'll be on a faster road where the speed limit will change. See one there warning me how fast I'm going and it will basically update in the car to the actual speed limit of the road, which is good. However, that doesn't always work. And that could be for a multitude of reasons from, you know, today the sun is quite low, so our winter's approaching annoyingly, but that could be blocking the elements. And you know what it's like if someone shines a bright torch in your eye, imagine the sun doing that to the car's camera and it can't see the, or even read the kind of speed limits for the road. Or a lorry could pass at the same time as you driving past the kind of speed sign. I've seen that before. And even, you know, with um, the trees and stuff like that, they could have grown over the sign and no one's, you know, maintained it or cut it back or anything. And um, yeah, you could find yourself uh, in a situation where you drive past the speed sign and it hasn't updated in the car. Take this bit here. I'm just turning right and you can see national speed limit. That sign is actually pointing to the left and the car hasn't read it. It still thinks it's a 30. Now, the second system as a backup is GPS. When you then approach and go onto a faster road like I am now, it's now updated. Now, the thing is, that second system is also flawed because what happens if the maps are out of date? You know, if you're like me, I use Apple CarPlay in a lot of cars and I don't update the sat-nav in, uh, in the car just because I, number one, don't want to pay for it and that sort of thing. So you might find that it might be beeping at you so it's got inaccurate data. So this is what I mean. Some of these systems are slightly flawed and, you know, GPS is accurate most of the time, but uh, certainly on this road here, there's a, like another road adjacent to it. So it might think that you're on that road 
and you might have taken a turn off and then it just tell you the wrong speed limit and then beep at you. So in the second when we come off, we'll see if it updates. Now I said, I'm not calling out any particular manufacturer. They're all the same. So they all primarily use this kind of camera which looks at the road signs and uh, if that doesn't work or it hasn't detected it, then it'll fall back on the GPS. But that's just enough for it to work 80% of the time, but then 20% of the time it doesn't work and that 20% of the time is damn right annoying. On roads like this where it's fairly straight, it's, it's fairly easy. It's the ones where you have a corner where it might not detect it and then suddenly you're driving down a road for two or three minutes with it bonging and beeping at you, thinking that you're speeding when you're clearly not. So another example, we're in this road here in a built-up area, which is a 30, and just down here, it's gonna change to 60. But, is it signposted well? Are the signs clean? Are they facing the right way? Are there any bushes in front of it? And some of these things, of course, will affect whether or not the car will be able to detect it. So yeah, that, here's, here's my case in point. I can see the national speed limit sign there on the right, obscured by bushes on the right hand side, but I can't see one on the left. So if that bush was grown just a little bit more, that might not actually come up, but let's see if it does indicate left. See now I have gone past the sign, but it hasn't updated. So yeah, there's my case in point that it's showing 30 but I'm clearly on a 60 mile an hour road. And now one would actually argue and say you wouldn't want to do 60 miles an hour on this road here because it's quite, um, well, narrow and you can't really see. Um, that's just one of the weird British quirks if anyone's watching overseas. Some roads are like this. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my case in point. So with all of this in mind, how do you turn it off? For Mercedes, there's three ways to turn this off. One on the main screen, go to settings, assistance, traffic sign assist, then speed limit warning. One of the fastest ways is the top of the screen, just tap here to turn it off, and then the mute button on the steering wheel, you can also hold this for a brief second to turn it off as well. For Volkswagen, they are a little different. Tap menu, assist systems, tap on the speed limit sign and toggle off from there. There is also a shortcut as well on the right hand side of the steering wheel, just press OK, go down to speed warning and toggle off from here. For Tesla, a simple press of the speed sign on the right-hand side of the screen will turn it off. For BMW and Mini, their process is exactly the same as Mercedes. Press the main menu button or the app launcher, tap vehicle to narrow the search, and then tap driving settings and tap deactivate speed limit warning. There is also a quicker way to do this as well, just like Mercedes. Press and hold the set button on the top left of the steering wheel for a few seconds. And again, that's for BMW and Mini combined. For BYD, on the home screen, swipe across a couple of pages to settings. On the right, go to ADAS, ADAS, driving assist, traffic sign recognition, then disable the intelligent speed limit information. You can also do this from the top of the screen as well under a favorites menu. Now, I guess the next thing you're gonna ask is, can you turn this off forever, like permanently? Um, sadly not. It is uh, an EU regulation, so all car manufacturers have to have this on by default. It falls into the same category as uh, eco stop, stop and driving modes and um, lane assist systems, emergency braking. All those things usually will default to on when you turn the car off and turn it back on. My thoughts on it really, I am all for this sort of tech. I think it's cool, but don't force it on people. You know, if someone wants it off, leave it off. Don't force it, you know, back to on when you turn the car on. Again, don't get mad at the car manufacturers. They're just following the rules. If I had it on my car, I probably would have it enabled, but I would like to turn it off when I know that it's probably not going to work for a certain situation or something. I don't know. I don't want to keep having to turn it off because that's just really annoying. But yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this particular feature of a car, if you call it that safety system but yeah let me know your thoughts uh, thanks so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it was useful for you so you now know how to turn it off in your own car but guys thank you so much until next time see you then